Make me a cream tea Vasilevsky. Hello and welcome to another Bolts Analysis 2020 as we look at the Tampa Bay Lightning and how they're doing and how other teams are doing. Do they win? Do they lose? What does it mean? Well, I'll tell you what it means at the moment. It means that thanks to last night's result, the Tampa Bay Lightning have a seven game winning streak. Three to one in Raleigh over the Carolina Hurricanes. We are on 52 points. We are third in the Atlantic and life is pretty darn good. Um, which it isn't for the Carolina Hurricanes. Two teams in rather contrasting form. Like I said, seven straight for the Lightning. The Canes have now lost five out of seven. So I guess in a way, maybe I should have been expecting uh, the Lightning to win, but I, I wasn't expecting this to be comfortable. I certainly wasn't expecting this to be actually probably the most comfortable of the four games we've had on the road trip. Um, this was way easier than Buffalo and uh, Ottawa, and I'd say it's probably easier than Montreal, simply because uh, first two shots, two goals. Um, Carolina just not with it at all. Didn't really seem to pick up the danger from Kucherov going to Verhege, managing to get it back to Stevens, who just absolutely buries it for 1 0. And then the second goal, again, Dougie Hamilton, is he strong enough? Does he get hooked? Well, nothing gets called, so I guess he he wasn't strong enough. Uh, it comes to Steven Samkos and all the people to leave, um, you know, on his own for, from a turnover. That's, yeah, that's, that's not going to end well for you, so that's 2 0. And I never thought. Listening to it, the Carolina, and watching the highlights back, the Carolina were going to get it back. Um, even when they were sort of leading in the shot count, they allowed Sampa again to sort of regain momentum, get the shot count sort of kind of equal, and then once again allowing Kucherov and Stamco to link up, get it to the breaking point, he's right on the doorstep, that's going to be 3 nothing all day long. Um, and yes, Svechnikov did get a goal, and it was quite a nicely worked goal by Carolina, but... No, too little too late. You can't play flat for two periods and then expect the third to save you. Uh, just because Washington were able to do it against San Jose, yeah, that's San Jose. San Jose have been having struggles all year. Tampa are now starting to get good and are sort of showing that they know how to close out games. And it was pretty comfortable, like I say. So that puts us off to 41 games on 52 points. Uh, we have two games in hand on both Toronto and Boston, and we're only one point behind Toronto, so that's pretty good, and we're only seven points behind Boston. It's starting to look like we might be able to sort of move even higher up the standings, but I'll take third in the Atlantic for now, considering where we were for quite a long um, period last year. Sort of, you know, early season wasn't great, certainly wasn't consistent now, looking much better. Um, looking at results from the other games, uh, sadly Pittsburgh didn't do us a favour. Florida uh, managed to win 4-1, quite impressively so. Uh, and Florida are now actually in the wildcard spots, uh, which kudos to them. You know, Joe Quen uh, Mr. Quenville showing that he knows you know, the stuff with Chicago, probably not a fluke. Um, and he's picked it up very nicely. I still think that Florida kind of needs to work at the defence a little bit, but... All guns blazing in an attack. And that means they managed to knock Philly out, who have kind of been looking like they might be sort of slipping away. Uh, and I think for Carolina, there's a little bit of concern now as well, because this you know, latest loss of the Lightning means that they're sort of only in the standings, uh, the wildcard spots by one point, and they're playing Philly next. They lose to Philly, they're out of the playoff standings, and in, you know that'll be... Six uh, defeats and eight, and that will not look good at all. Um, yeah, especially, you know, after the sort of optimism of being able to get back in the past for the first time in ten years last year, get yourself all the way to the Eastern Conference Final. Wonderful stuff. Expectations go up. This kind of feels like they're coming crashing back down again, which is a shame because I quite like watching Carolina. I particularly like listening to John Forsler making the calls, but they, they need to sort... That get themselves out of this current funk, or the likes of Florida and Philly are going to overtake them, and maybe even Columbus. Um, more, I guess, interesting results in the Western Conference. Uh, quite a game in Minnesota between Minnesota and Calgary. Calgary get the win. That puts them in the wild card uh, spots along with Edmonton. Um, Nashville kind of losing ground a little bit. Probably will feel they could have got two points in Anaheim, but they only got the one. Uh, and uh, Detroit become even more relevant with another loss to Chicago. 
who still probably won't make the playoffs as they're not very good defensively. A um, couple of games tonight, uh, three or four, um, all quite interesting, quite relatively evenly matched. Now you've got the Oilers currently in a wildcard spot against the Toronto Maple Leafs. I do expect the Leafs to win that one because they have been very hot. But it's one where if they're not careful and they don't sort of, you know, they're not tight defensively, the likes of McDavid, Dreisaitl and to a lesser extent Neil will rip them to bits. Um, and I guess it depends on sort of who they s sort of decide to have in goal. Do they stick with Hutch, who had a very good shutout performance against the Islanders, or do they go back to Freddy? It's a, it's a tricky one to call. I, I, I think the Leafs will probably win it, but they need to be on their toes, as it were. Um, another very good matchup uh, between the New York Islanders and the Colorado Avalanche. Uh, I'm going to say probably Colorado, because I feel like the Islanders haven't quite been themselves recently. Got shut out by the Leafs. I think they've won, they've lost six of the last nine, something like that. It's not, not a good statistic. They lost to the Devils. Uh, they got mauled by Nashville uh, a couple of weeks ago. Just just kind of feels like it might be, you know, not not reason, not time to panic. They're certainly in a healthier position than, say, Carolina. But perhaps time to just look at a couple of things and maybe go, well, you know, can we improve the scoring? You know, is it possibly that our defensive game isn't quite there? Needs a little bit of fine-tuning, maybe ch change around a few lines. Just, the, just yeah. Because I think you need to be focused and on it against Colorado because <laughs> you let the likes of Nathan McKinnon and Miko Ranton and Gabriel Anderskog, you know, come out all guns blazing and oh boy, you are in for a long, long night. Um, other game, there's, there's, there's two other games. I know one is Columbus uh, in Los Angeles to take on the Kings. And it's not looking too shabby for Columbus uh, recently. They've, they've managed to get a couple of good wins. It does kind of feel like every time they get a bit of momentum, they lose a bit. But they're, considering they lost Bobrovsky, Panarin and Duchesne, they're not actually looking too bad for a wild card spot. I think they're only about three or four points out of the standings. So get a win tonight and it might you know, look like it's, uh, it's back on for them. And the other game, which had gone out of my head, uh, it's the same, similar kickoff, uh, puck drop to Oilers, Maple Leafs, and Avalanche Islanders, it is the Winnipeg Jets travelling to Montreal Canadiens. And another one where it's two Canadian teams, so that'll be fun. But it's also kind of two teams needing a bit of a bit of a boost, a bit of uplift in form, because Winnipeg have just slipped out of the playoffs at the spots, and that's disappointing by their standards. Montreal wants to sort of get back to where they were because they've been inconsistent of late and Winnipeg will also be looking for revenge because it didn't go well for them uh, last time these two met it was in Winnipeg and Montreal won 6-3 to three, um, which is a bit I don't know one of those ones not necessarily that makes you sort of you know gasp and sort of you know struggle to take in how that could have happened definitely one that makes you raise your eyebrows a bit and go oh Montreal won in Winnipeg okay mm. um, so yeah some interesting games all round. Uh, I will try and analyse what's going on with them tomorrow and also look ahead to Tampa against Vancouver where a team that's won seven straight comes up against a team that's won seven straight. Um, so goodness knows how that's going to end up, but I'll, I'll do my best to sort of try and predict it. Until then, this has been Bolts Analysis 2020. And remember, two shots, two goals. That's a good start.